walking with God. In the first seven years, we walked all day long, just about every day. It was my opportunity to talk out loud rather than by thought, as I did at the townhome, so as not to alarm my parents. I had tried to tell them what was going on, but without reading these books, this is, uh, this is chapter 10, I think, of my life, uh, the life of God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, which is my life, and God dictated it to me. It's just like the, uh, the first book, Isaiah 53, in the day of the Lord. Just as the Torah was written by Moses, those two books are divinely received by me. <clears throat> they and my children did not and do not believe me that God has spoken to me. I have not mentioned it again in 12 years. Silent as a lamb, fitting the description of Isaiah 53 verse 7, which reads, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he would not open his mouth. Like a lamb to the slaughter he would be brought, and like an ood that is mute before her shears, and he would not open his mouth. The same thing would have applied to Ezekiel. God told him, Go to your house, my, the cords of my power bind you, and you shall not go out with the people again <clears throat> anymore and then he's pinned to the ground and he's going through God's fire refinement my walks were and are always up to God and used as a training tool in one fashion or another to be in perfect harmony with his weight and power learning how to live as three persons in one human body and being the least of the three to practice sermons and speeches as God gives me a topic such as man and divine beings, and to change my emotions and character by such things, among many others, as surprising me with a body slammed to the ground when I least expect it, on grass for punishment, crushing and bruising and on cement for wounds in the form of a busted chin, lips, forehead, and cracking my skull one time. Sometimes he had a destination in mind, but usually we just walked aimlessly all over the city. By the way, all those words I just used, wounded, crushed, bruised, punishment, and my treatment comes a little bit later, can be found in verses one, uh, one through six that are in quotes. It's just part of the refinement to make me capable of being his righteous servant, suitable to him with emotions and everything so that I can draw, convince people who I am and draw them to me and let them know, among other things, the new covenant's here. And I deliver it in this book. And in the new covenant, it's really just an amendment of the first covenant. And that's what makes it new. There's an amendment to it. Be mindful of the teachings I gave Moses for all the <clears throat> uh, for all of Israel and uh, the other is the forgiveness of sins that, that's new that was in the first covenant but it is something he did for the Assyrian Babylonian exiles who became a holy seat and built the second temple and again in Malachi that's where you find the covenant uh, he says the angel of the covenant you desire is on the way and that's the covenant. The angel is the angel of his presence because he's coming too. The angel leaves first, but there's a reason for saying that, that I'll get to some other time. It has to do when I offer myself for guilt. Everybody was sin free. I didn't offer myself really for anything. It was just like, it was just a test because of that. Because the angel was already here. All Jews have been forgiven. Now they don't know that. Because we, we just haven't gotten far enough with all this. But once they learn of it, and they believe in me, and they're in right standing with God. Because unlike the Christians, just because you're sin free doesn't mean you're going to the heaven he's creating. That's what the scroll of remembrance is for. That's what it's about. 
So anyway, yeah, I mean, just imagine, man, you, you're talking with God. Everything seems to be great. It's a beautiful day. And you're walking and talking. And all of a sudden, I mean, especially the first time, before I got, got on to him, <laughs> caught on a little bit. And all of a sudden, you just slammed to the ground. I mean, it's not like you fall to the ground. You're literally slammed. And, you know, it <laughs> pretty much knocks you senseless. And it, it hurts your feelings. You know, I mean, I live with him. Uh, it's just, uh, I mean, you kind of think that through, how that starts to change your emotions. But every time he draws anger from me, irritation, uh, embarrassment, every time he does, he keeps track of it. And he starts to coat me so that I don't have those same feelings if naysayers come up to me in Jerusalem and start spitting on me. I'm going to feel like the, i got uh, ice in my veins. It won't bother me. But that's not the character I was before he started training me up to be a prophet. I said, I know. I, he had, me, had to hold me back <laughs> with his power and seal my mouth because I would have been living if somebody doing that to me. And uh, <laughs> that's what I was saying. I can't have my prophet beating up people, okay? That's actually the Holy Spirit. But anyway. One August, usually we just walked aimlessly all over the city. One August, Houston set a record of 100 degrees plus every single day, and I was walking 15 to 20 miles every day. I found that gas filling stations no longer have water fountains, as they did in my youth. I didn't even have money for a soda or a water. All day long in 100 plus feet, I'd, I'd be telling him, uh, you know, we, we know today that it's just not good for you not to drink some water every hour when you exercise. It's not good for your body and everything. And and, and his response would be, oh, well, <laughs> that's how the Holy Spirit talks, by the way. Oh, well, he says, uh, he says, well, you should have seen the Israelites. You should have seen how thirsty they were. You think you're thirsty. You're not close. And on and on and on because I didn't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> so I stopped saying I was thirsty. <laughs> God would say, thirst is great. <laughs> it gives you the strength to get back to where there it is water. Okay, that's the Holy Spirit talking through me. At the time it actually happened, it was God saying these things. One day, God had me walk to the museum district, and there he showed me the Holocaust Museum. In his power, he overwhelmed me with a sadness. I mean, I, it was already a pretty glum place to go visit, but very interesting. But he burst me into tears. It was so... I felt there so much emotionally, and uh, you know, I don't usually cry, and, I, and certainly not in public. And it seemed that he was telling me that is how he was feeling. That's the way I thought of it. It was far more than 20 miles round trip, and it was late into the evening when I got home. We, we actually went back again after that. There were times I was sleeping and God would crush a foot or my feet with the invisible hands of God formed in his power and say, get up and get your shoes. Get your shoes on. It did not matter if it was raining or freezing or both. One night he had me walk in the rain and cold, return, and get into dry clothes, and an hour later, after falling back to sleep, he crushed my feet and told me to put my wet clothes back on for another walk. And that, see, that makes me think of a cadet training to be a Green Beret. Or just somebody in the Army trained to be a Naval SEAL, and what, what they had to go through. You know, with the sergeant screaming at you and making you do things physically you just can't do anymore and exhausted and sleep deprivation. And he's just he's just training me up to be a prophet. This is how prophets are trained up. If if they 
It just depends on what he needs and what their tasks are. One night we walked some 10 miles to another park in the Attic's Reservoir, which I have mentioned before. There were many paths for running and bike riding, winding through the wooded areas, and before long, I had no idea where I was. And it was, it was late and time to head back home. So God took over verbally instead of controlling the walk and direction in his power. In other words, he started telling me, and it's not telepathy, it's spirit to spirit. It's the way he talks to an angel in heaven. It's real complicated. I have a lot of information on it, but uh, I'll get to it in a different video. It's in the books. During these walks, I do not think about when to turn or not. And this is why he took over verbally. Usually I just walk and my body just goes where he wants me to go. I just walk in God's power and he decides when I turn or stop and the speed of my walking pace and, and how heavy his presence is on me. So he tells me turn here and turn there for hours. I'm walking exhausted, obeying all of his directions. In my mind, I have a perception. I'm about to see a highway that has me out of the park. The perception was placed in my mind by God. It was a ridiculous perception, but very real to me. And that's just another lesson. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3, it says, uh, My judgments and decisions aren't based on what my eyes see and my ears hear. That's what that's about. He controls my perception, even around other people. You know, you, you have your own perceptions. You meet somebody and you start, you feel a certain way about them, think a certain way about them. He decides how I do that. And again, it's been a long process. This, it, this is the 13th year and he hasn't slowed down. As a matter of fact, each year it's gotten tougher and more painful emotionally and physically. And he says that's because it's harder to draw it out of you. And that's the whole idea behind making making me angry. It's just you do it enough until you finally think you stop making you angry. And he coats, coats my spirit, my soul, my body. I don't know where anger comes from. He coats it so that it's, uh, it's different than when we started, a lot different. I'm not the person we, he began with. <laughs> he would tell you, because I'm saying 13 years, I did it just last week, 13 years. I said, you're kidding me, you're God. Just, just do the rest in your power. I know you can. <laughs> he said, it's because of what I started with. It's the process I use. I've used it for all my prophets in one, to one extent or another. He said, but you can remember what I started with with you. So eventually I had to go, okay, okay, you're right. But what a process. <laughs> we came to a clearing where I expected to see the highway, and I'm back where I started. When he started speaking verbally, turn here, turn there. <laughs> I fell to the ground, uttered this me. I did, I just collapsed. I just collapsed. It was like, kill me, man. I can't go on. I can't, I can't take another step. I can see the first rays of dawn. It is always something, and this would be torment and maltreatment. This is every day. I mean, sometimes it just goes, it doesn't stop. He'll do something to irritate and to fire out of me, and I don't think I can take it five minutes. You know, three weeks later, I'm asking him, how is it I'm not losing my mind? He says, I won't let you. you know, he's so calm about these things. I went into the woods off the path and slept for an hour or so and made it home around noon. Another time, we walked to Bray's Bio and still another part of town far away, but near where I grew up in a, a suburb called West University. It turned out, unbeknownst to me, it was where a large community of the Houston uh, Jews lived with many synagogues. I did remember going with one of my Jewish friends to the Jewish Community Center when I was in junior high school. 
He was a member and allowed to bring guests in, and we played basketball and other games. I walked by it, and it had not changed at all. I kept walking, turning here and there in God's power, when I realized I was walking beside a long metal fence that, looking up, had to run another hundred yards. Inside the fence was a synagogue named Beth Yesron, and God told me it was a conservative synagogue where he was going to have me convert to Judaism. Before this, he had told me I would convert Orthodox in Jerusalem. Though I did not know anything about the differences in conservative and Orthodox Judaism, I was about to learn and attend my first Saturday service services after I signed up for the conversion class. This was in late summer and the high holidays were coming up and I would be given free tickets to all the high holiday events. The next week I drove my dad's car to Beth Yesaron without a driver's license that God let expire. I wasn't happy about it. The entire synagogue was surrounded by that fence with a guard who let me in the park. It had been a long time since I had been around people, and I was really enjoying the experience of seeing my first synagogue and very impressed. It is one of the largest conservative synagogues in the world. People were extremely helpful, and I found my way to where I signed up for the conversion class, which started the next week. Perfect timing by God. In my first class, I met the rabbi and received all the materials for the class, which included one day a week of Hebrew lessons by the rabbi's wife. The following week, I attended a Shabbat Friday night dinner at the rabbi's house with other class members filled with teachings and great food. The whole time, God in the Angel of his presence were talking to me, further explaining things, and even had me excuse myself from the table and look at the rabbi's Talmud series of books. I had never seen the Talmud series before. I enjoyed every minute of the evening. Interestingly, my rabbi had been a practicing attorney and quit practicing law to become a rabbi. His reasons for quitting the law were different from mine. Though I did not discuss them. I, I never mentioned to anybody outside of just my parents and my kids that God was speaking to me. Uh, and in the first year, I didn't even know why. I, I didn't know enough. I, I didn't know what a righteous servant was or a Moshiach. I didn't know anything. God, in the first couple of weeks, God says, we need to go to the bookstore and uh, uh, get you a Tanakh. My response was, what's it turn out? <laughs> I mean, that's where I, that's where I was. <clears throat> so on Saturday morning, I drove again to Beth Yesterday for services. When I had signed up for the conversion class, a woman who was not in the conversion class asked me to be in her minion where men and women could both attend and sit together. It was not in the sanctuary, but the room we used had an ark with Torah scrolls, <clears throat> a bema, sitters or siders, sitters, and the hetera, and a shamash for everyone. <laughs> so this will need to be rereading this and relearning. Then the shakaret Shabbat began with chanting in Hebrew that I was not <laughs> expecting, and I really liked it a lot. I thought it was very moving even though I did not understand a single word. My conversion rabbi stopped by and sat with me for a while, and at my request to have a talit gadol with tizit for the morning service, he said soon, but not yet. God commanded me to ask him for that, by the way. <laughs> he said, so I would know what it was. Everyone was nice, and the woman who invited me to this menu sat with me for a while, explaining why certain things were being done and what to do when the Torah scrolls walked around the room. I thoroughly enjoyed all of it. 
uh, at seven o'clock prayers had begun leading into the high holidays. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year, which commemorates God's creation of the world, but also the Day of Judgment, when God remembers and judges all human deeds. Human beings are believed to be in mortal danger at this time, with their lives hinging on the decision to repent. Only those who choose to forego sin are inscribed in the symbolic Book of Life. That is a central liturgical image of Rosh Hashanah. The Book of Life is not to be confused with the scroll of remembrance of Malachi 3 in the day of the Lord, which is Jeremiah 31's time to come. The scroll of remembrance is not about life or death on earth. It is for entry to the new heaven God is creating with the name Israel shall endure. A new heaven for the spirits of the Jewish people in the scroll of remembrance who will be angelic. The angels Israel. A new host of angels. That's what makes it a new heaven. I'm creating a new heaven and earth. We can kind of figure how he's going to create a new earth. <clears throat> but why is it a new heaven? That's why. It's when he rises up all the Jewish people for the Jewish heaven that he calls Jerusalem. That was mostly for the people of antiquity because they believed, as Judaism teaches today, that that's how they believe there is no spiritual heaven. It's all done down here on earth. Well, it's, you know, he, he gave two different things. He gave resurrection of the dead and calls it Jerusalem, but Ezekiel 1 and 10, which I just put on a video, is all about rising up the Jewish people to heaven. This is what God taught me as Elijah, who is the messenger of Malachi 3. What well, he asked Elijah, the only man specifically taken to heaven, and then God sends him back. That ought to be a big question mark on everyone's head. You know, why? Well, one reason is I can talk to the angel of the covenant. I mean, you know, that's the angel of God's presence. <laughs> we actually do these kind of things. Where he says, Keith, here's the new covenant. Go and answer it. <laughs> I'll say, me. I say, I don't control anything. Y'all have to have me go and announce it. Anyway, it's written into the books. And returns in the day of the Lord with knowledge of the mysteries of heaven. Knowledge taught to me by God on earth by his words and in visions of heaven during his fire of refinement to make me suitable for his purpose that might prosper. Which is building the temple. I have to be recognized for who I am to get that done. And even then, I'm going to need everybody's help. And... Uh, the politicians, the IDF, everybody's going to have to, even if they're secular, they have to know that the, that the religious community is raising me up high saying he has to be. The proofs are too much. His knowledge too great. And you want to let, they, they, they have to lift me up high for God's wrath on Christianity. He wants them, he wants them to hear it. He wants them to hear they can't go to heaven. That they've never been forgiven by him. That if they want to see heaven, they're going to have to convert to Judaism and become Jews. He's living in them. Not too happy with the rabbis either, but apparently that's, that's something that happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he showed me a lot of different verses talking about the shepherds. I have seen where the angels Israel will be, the meeting places, the heavenly temple, and in the individual rooms with great bay windows to view the creation of the new earth. God had me up in my room, what will be my room. We were up there it actually had to do with me dealing with his weight and his power. It was making me feel car sick. And he took me up there to do some different things in this room. It's very simple, a bed, a table, a lamp, and this great bay window. He says, go go look out that window. 
<laughs> I walked into it. It's, it's the window that extends out of the room, kind of like a, a small porch that's glassed in. He said, look down. And I looked down, and uh, I could see the creation of Earth. I mean, it was, it was just like on the first page of Genesis. There's no line, but it was like he was showing me tectonic plates breaking up, volcanoes, um, the separation of the continents, that's the tectonic plates, but uh, it was amazing. And uh, of course in heaven, you, you don't really know time and you don't really know hunger or want to eat. You, you're a different creature, but you're the you that you know. You're still the person that you are. And see, these are the things he wants me to teach you. He says, you may think and you hear that they're not really concerned about heaven. They're more concerned with how they lead their lives on a daily basis. But he said, that's not always true at all. There's a lot of people on the verge of death that are so scared, and they need to know, they need to know what God's doing for the Jewish people. And that, that's going to be something, um, you know, my life's going to be giving speeches, uh, seminars, going to synagogues, different topics. I mean, it's how I'm going to make my living if I ever get back to the land of the living. Whew. Yeah, I used to have a pretty good bit of money. I was licensed to practice law for 20 years and this and that. I mean, I knew what it was to have just about anything you wanted, you know, upper middle class, I guess, to poverty. I mean, to nothing, to where I can't buy water. <laughs> yeah, but I, he had me adapt to it very easily. It wasn't, anyhow. So I looked down. And since this is how he had me uh, type it. View the creation of his new earth, unformed and void, with darkness over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God sweeping over the water to its end, and the creation of man and a new chosen people of God. Listen, to Jewish people, if you ever really wonder, you know, what was it really like for the chosen people in the beginning, early on? Uh, through the Middle Ages, uh, when all these things were done in Spain and all these uh, forced conversions, and, because it's going to happen again. All the names are going to be different. Uh, the, the history will be different. But that's why it's a Jewish heaven. That's why, that's why everybody needs to get back to synagogue. You're, you're free of sin, but nobody's going to stay that way if they don't become observant. The, <laughs> the evil inclination will bring everybody down at some time. And, and you want to be in right standing. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line for getting into the scroll of remembrance right now. Because everybody's forgiven, everybody's sinners, even though they don't know it. Um, and, you know, uh, these are things, and, 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 and telling people, look, just be mindful. You, you don't have to, I mean, do all the basics. You know, study. And, and this is this is tore on your heart. This is all part of it. Being able to draw people back to being observant Jews, back to synagogue, or to synagogue if you've never been, if you've been secular all your life. <clears throat> you know, just to show God how much you respect what he's doing. And I, I should thank for many, many Jews, uh, what he's sounding off on t to the Christians has got to be, <laughs> it's got to feel pretty good. We told you so. You've been telling us we can't read our book for 2,000 years. That we're blind to the fact that it's all about Jesus and that 53 is prophetic of him. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong. Here's a picture of the guy. This is him. And he's the exact opposite of your Jesus Christ, who isn't described in 53. On and on and on. Building that temple, God says, will show the world, the nations, that I sanctify Israel, and the Jewish people. So it's a big time. It's not the Messianic era, but uh, it's not meant to be heaven on earth. He's got a heaven he's making. When this earth is gone, I'm making a new heaven and a new earth. So like, what, what's God doing all this? He's making a new heaven. Because, because he creates angels. He has to create their personality. But down here, our, per, our personalities are formed by the world. That's another problem with the Messianic era. 
when all of a sudden you have generations of Jewish people who don't go through strife and suffering and hatred and anti-Semitism or anything else. He says, no, no, no. I want every generation to go through that for my heaven. That's my purpose. That's just the way it is. I'm not coming down there and making everybody speak Hebrew. I'm not going to make all the nations love each other. I'm not going to have the world exalting the Jew. And guess who has to tell you about it? His servant. The prophet like Moses, the descendant of David, and of course, by my knowledge, Elijah himself, the messenger of Malachi 3, who receives the new covenant from the angel, angel of his presence, who is within me. He entered into me, the Holy Spirit, entered into me, and God was in him. That, of course, is in another video also. So that's, that's the entertainment. I mean, you can go to meeting places and be around people. I mean, I've been at the temple. We, he took, every time we did it, almost a chapter, but, uh, and David was in it, he almost always I had a vision of being in the temple. And so I was, a, I was like King David. You know, one of the, it was two large rooms. It's not like the temple on earth. One of them was like a heavenly room, spiritual heavenly room, and uh, bright white light. And the other was like a, a great uh, a throne hall and with water running through it and going down the steps, kind of like Ezekiel talks about it. And Isaiah at one point, uh, I'm pretty sure, it was, it was teaching, it was just, uh, just changing it over time. <clears throat> I just covered all this. These two books, each book is full of knowledge of the scripture and God's interpretations of it. The greatest minds in Judaism could not see in antiquity to this day. Answers to questions never asked and eras of interpretations by the sages and rabbis of antiquity, including Rambam and Rashi. I've mentioned what those are already. I am the only man to understand Isaiah 53 through the book of Ezekiel. Explain every verse and be described in every verse, and that includes Jesus Christ. It is not possible that I would have such knowledge of my own. I was an atheist for 50 years, never having, never having read the Bible until God said, let's go get you a Tanakh. Many of the mitzvah cannot be observed now, following the destruction of the second temple. I, I, I was just, it's knowledge that all religious Jews already have, that so many of the commandments are positive, so many negative, and, and some only apply in Israel, and then they have, you have the animal sacrificial atonement worship laws. Uh, God did away with anyway, and... Uh, Telling his people, that goes my backdrop. I'm going to continue on. I think I'm almost done. Although they still retain religious significance. But here it is. According to one standard reckoning, there are 77 positive and 194. <laughs> I didn't see it changing by them. Now I can't see a name. Well, I'm going to try to finish this. You can listen to it. Commandments that can be observed today, of which there are 26 commands that apply only within the land of Israel. Okay, that'll... I may continue this. There's something right here. I hope he has me read, but i got to check my camera.
to be entered into the scroll of remembrance, the Jews of the world forgiven of their sins and made righteous by God, believing in me that the new covenant is here, must also be in right standing with God. If you're a good person who does not intentionally harm others, revere and esteem God's name and heed him, you're in right standing with God. And this is in contrast to the Christians. Uh, a murderer, a child molester, a wife beater can accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And they get to go to heaven and be with Jesus. It doesn't matter what you've done. That's not true with God. Just because you're sin free, you say, well, you're sin free. It's good. It's good for you. But that doesn't mean you're getting anything from me. And this is the, this is the guy the Christians think performs human sacrifice for them. I can't tell you. Remember, I, I was an atheist for 50 years. Not a religious person. And now that I've learned what Christianity is, I, I, I hope Paul. I have other words, but I don't get to use them anymore. <laughs> Rabbis and religious leaders have been dismissed by God and are not right standing with him. He says, when, when, when the shepherd David, my servant, comes, who is Moshe, of course, and I, I've never heard, I can't find any videos where I hear any rabbi talking about this. <laughs> and I know they pray for him. Orthodox does every week. It's one of the fundamental principles of Rambam in the Jewish faith. Um, did you know he was going to have a reckoning with you? Were you? And what do you think the reckoning is about? Messianic air. World to come. This is a day of enlightenment. Reason. Medicine. Silence. you got to learn how to read the Bible. Guess who brings the rest for God? His servant. His prophet, the righteous servant of God, prophet like Moses, Elijah. This who brings the reckoning, same guy. I am Moshe. And y'all thought I was going to come down here and love on you. You got the wrong. That's not why he picked me. <laughs> Although he's tempered me a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot happier, smiling, <laughs> nice person, you know. But anyway, yeah, you're, you're dismissed. And there's only one way you're coming out of it. You're going to have to hold me up high, number one. And number two, you're going to have to teach the matters of those two books he dictated in that time. You're going to have to tell your flocks all over the world that the Messianic era that we teach is not going to happen. I've seen Jews of Judaism. they got all kinds of videos on it. World's going to love them. Exalt the Jew. He said that was great. Those are great verses, great verses for antiquity. But uh, if 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 you see what looks like prophecy, and understandably so, that it reads like prophecy. If it can't happen, <laughs> you gotta say, huh? What else? What other purpose could God have? Hey, I don't know. What if it's just for a religious purpose, just so we we think about something that could be or. Well, that's how we'll feel when we are in the spiritual heaven of Ezekiel 1 and 10. Or like the book of Daniel, because he knew what the Christians were going to do. They, they think that book, which is not even a, a prophetic book, it's not in the book of the prophets. Um, but they can figure out when Jesus is going to return. I just, I just went through this in my last video. But uh, he's not coming back. See, I got, I'm going to be with the greatest anti-missionary of all time. I got just, I got knowledge. Of and I had the ability to deliver it in God's power. And in the voice that he wants, the infliction he wants. He literally, you know, they're in me. And I don't have control of anything. And that's part of this 13 years also. It's just, it's a long it just takes a long time to get used to it. <laughs> the Holy Spirit came up to me one day, saw, comes over to me. He's got a character to share of himself. He's just like God. He doesn't have any former image. Okay? Do like two great big clouds. That's how I think about him. But he's got a character to share of himself that they can put into my mind. I, I call them visuals. 
and I have them all day long, visuals, that, pictures that put in my mind. Uh, God says it's a better way to communicate, words and pictures. You, you've heard it, a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, he puts them together. And um, he said, don't you think God's slow? And he said, I call him pokey because he's so slow. And I'm like, you know, if I listen to you talk about things like that, I'm the one who ends up starting to hurt somewhere. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> and you laugh. He, you know, he says, I've never had to work. I've never felt pain. I know what pain is, though, Keith. Don't say it. And, uh, and he says, I'm always happy, you know. I get quiet sometimes, but anyway, he's quite the comedian. The greatest comedian of all times throughout the universe. As he would have me do. As the anointed one of Isaiah 11, God has appointed me to be a leader of his people, teaching the matters of Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord and this book. And that's what God says. He says, he says I'm going to have a reckoning with the rabbis and dismiss them, and then I'm going to appoint my servant David, that's Moshe, as a leader amongst them, not a king, as a ruler amongst them. And really, you're hearing everything I'm going to be doing. I should end up with a large following, a multitude, starting with the many. And these are the things I'm going to be teaching heaven as Elijah, uh, these books, what it means to have a spirit enter you and God is in him, and on and on. And that, that will be the height of, of my renown, I guess, as opposed to a king of the world. Gathering my kingdom. Rabbis and religious leaders can become in right standing with God by also teaching the matters of these books. To remain in right standing and to avoid the evil inclination and sin again, losing your righteousness, you must return to the observance of Judaism, being mindful of the teaching of God's servant Moses, whom God charged at Ori with laws and rules for all Israel rather than strict compliance required of every Israelite. God makes it clear in Malachi 3. Just because the new covenant's here, I know many, many of the Jewish people are still not going to heed me, revere, and esteem my name. Many will. And those that do will find a way into the school of remembrance. But you got to throw in right standing. That's, that's the new teaching that comes to me, the teacher of righteousness. As I said, the original covenant remains the same with the amendment to be mindful and the inclusion of sin forgiveness. And God repeats over and over, and I will be your God and you will be my people. It's not like he ever stopped me. It's really when he says those things, it's an affirmation and confirmation of the first covenant because that's what it was. Do everything I give to Moses for y'all to do. I'll be your God, you'll be my people. You know, the Christians believe that they took the New Covenant. They took the New Covenant. That's what New Testament means. Testament and Covenant, same thing. They said they changed. I said, okay. They, basically what they said was, well, it's not sin forgiveness, you know, written by God. No, it's because he sent us Jesus. That's the New Covenant. He, he changed it. Well, it is. does have to change. God tells me he will let me attend the high holidays from Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur and all the liturgy and customs in between the 10 days of repentance, Sukkot, that follows four days after Yom Kippur, and Shemini at Zerah. I know I didn't get that right. When I am in Israel, but not in Houston. I just had a good time being there and enjoyed the friendliness of all the people. Shortly after Sukkot, that when I first started conversion classes, my father had a heart attack. And I never returned to complete the conversion classes. I could have a couple of weeks um, later when my dad had recovered from a quadruple bypass. But God said no. Ending my affiliation with Beth, yes or no. I will convert Orthodox in Jerusalem, become an Israeli citizen. Next year, 